Windows, Windows 10 Home. What the luck? Come on, let's get rid of that Windows Home. Let's get some Windows Pro. Copy and paste my code from the description. You can also get Office 2019. Just paste my code. Woof, it's Windows Pro time. Now, we have it here. Look, the Surface Pro 7 finally arrived at my door. Now, if you guys are new around here, I'm going to do multiple comprehensive videos on this. You know, for content creation, gaming, I will test basically everything for this. So make sure you sub up, join the word train, hit that bell, ding -a, a dong because I will cover it in depth. Much more depth than anyone else, I can tell you right now. Now, there were two major upgrades to this. One, We've got Ice Lake CPUs and two, you can see right there, USB-C. Now, it's not Thunderbolt. I wish it was, but it is what it is. Let's unbox it and have a look. And this is the box that comes in. Nice, neat little box there. It is not the upgrade that probably a lot of people were hoping for. It's not a new redesign, stuff like that. So it's basically like the Surface Pro 6. But those upgrades, those internal upgrades of Ice Lake CPUs is going to be game changing because I can tell you already testing one, you get a lot better graphics and you'll be able to edit 4K content on these. So video edit 4K content, which you probably could do with the last one, but the thing was the render times were horrendous. And on this one here, the render times should be good. There's all the specs there. You can see, you know, Windows 10 home, home. Come on, you know what to do. If you get Windows 10 Home, use my code in the description, get some Windows 10 Pro, just punch in the key, you'll be able to upgrade this. Also, if we have a look here, I won't show you the serial numbers. This is the spec I got. So I've got Intel 10th generation, so this is Ice Lake CPU, it's quad core, has Iris Plus graphics, so this one does have the good graphics. It, you know, some of the ones with the Ice Lake CPU, they don't always give you the good graphics. With the Surface, they do. And this has eight gigabytes RAM, 128 gigs storage. So it's gonna be interesting for me to know how the i5 performs compared to the i7. If you wanna know what the i7 performs like, so if you bought an i7 model and you wanna know specifically what the i7 is gonna perform like, check out my XPS 13 gaming review. The two in one uses the same CPU as the i7 model as this uses. But this i5, it should be able to boogie and the old model used to be fanless. So is this fanless? I'm not sure, we'll soon find out. Let's unbox it. Okay, so we'll take off the box. We have the unit itself, should be able to see there, you will have, you know, Windows Hello and stuff like that. USB-C, ooh, USB-C, um, some literature in there. It's just all of these basically, you know, warranty and stuff like that. And the power brick, of course, you cannot power this. You Actually, I don't know if you can power it with USB-C. I will try that out. But it still has the Surface connector, which I do love because the good thing about the Surface connector is if you get your cord yanked, you're not gonna kill the machine. So, you know, one bad thing about USB-C, is if it's connected via USB-C, when you yank the cord, you're gonna yank your thing off the table, your laptop or whatever. I've gotta say straight away, it's super light, super light this feels. Oh yes, that's nice. That's one thing, it's so small and thin and light. It's awesome. We have a look on the side, of course, we have USB type A and USB C. You have the surface power connector there, which is awesome. The left hand side, we have headphone jack, and on the bottom, the surface connector that's where you connect your keyboard, open it up, and we still have the micro SD card slot, which is useful for storage. That's why you can buy one with a smaller storage and you can just add, you know, extra storage there. It's really good because you can get some really big and fast ones now, micro SD cards, signed by Microsoft there. And finally on the top, you have the power button and the volume rocker and look how well it's put together. Look at that, the gaps, the tolerances, beautiful. 
beautiful craftsmanship it really is a nice product all right so which surface is which <laughs> can you tell which one's the surface pro 3 and which one's the surface pro 7 well yeah that's a hint there so we are indeed charging through USB-C okay so that is charging I'll put it on full performance mode and yes that is the USB-C it's not using a normal connector they're both on maximum brightness and as you can see this is brighter the new one of course this is Surface Pro 3 but they don't look that dissimilar do they like when you have all oh, I'll just put them that way you know not much difference is there I mean, yeah, this is a bit more refined and stuff, but yeah, they haven't changed much over the years, although this is thinner and lighter and we'll test out the battery life, etc. But it's awesome. We've got USB-C. That's amazing. The display looks amazing. Let's just give it a quick thermal test and just see if it is actually fanless or we'll just test out the firm. We'll see how good they are. And then I'll get stuck into reviewing it. Now, what I also would say is don't, buy one of the surface pens unless you're some sort of artist or something get this one this is very cheap you can buy like four of these for the price of a normal surface pen i'll leave a link in the description and these are indeed magnetized and you can put it on the side there like that just like a surface pen and the old keyboard let's test this is from a surface pro 3 let's whack it in there boom straight away it comes in Yep, and it works straight away. So the old uh, cover works, so you can use it. Like if you've got an old Surface product, you'll be able to use the old touch cover. So let's give it a bit of a thermal test to see how we go. All right, let's give this a quick center bench run to test the thermals out. So let's run it. We can see there pumping out 28 watts. Now, these Ice Lake CPUs up to 40 watts, 42 watts. Okay, these Ice Lake CPUs can you know use between 15 and 25 watts it depends how they configure it we'll see how they configure it oh we already know they've configured it to 25 watts so it's going to go down to 25 watts how long now there's no fan i can't hear anything so i think this is passively cooled again 80 degrees i don't know how they do this this is like magic because every other laptop i get has a fan and I can hear it, you cannot hear anything. That's the good thing about the i5. And we're still pushing 25 watts, 80 degrees. No noise. But the only thing you can hear is the stupid bird outside that's going off its chops. So um, this is amazing. Getting the full 25 watts, no noise, passively cooled, 80 degrees. Wow, 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 wow. They do some magic with this. I do believe the i7 has a fan. So that's one thing. If you want something silent, this is the one to get. Um, 74. Hey, 74, what have we dropped? Oh, okay, so now we've dropped down to 17 watts. So that's 2.1. Now the base speed is 1.5. So now we've dropped down to 17 watts. Now that's the downside, of course. It's not going to sustain those sort of speeds. Actually, I'll have to test if it is the USB that's causing this i doubt it's the usb you know maybe with the power it will continue to do 25 watts but now it's gone down to 17 watts just because it doesn't want to burst for that long they've obviously baked that in and we're going at 2 gigahertz 2.1 so for example the xps 13 2 1 would go at 25 watts the whole test like so that's one thing they've done here They've definitely made sure that it's not going to sustain that 25 watts. They've baked that in. It's still good performance. You're still getting over 2 gigahertz, which is good for this. And considering it has no fan, I'm very happy with it. But obviously, they're more happy to have it running at 70 degrees rather than 80. It would probably start creeping up to maybe 85, 90 if it was continuing at that 25 watts. So, yeah, this is quite amazing. Um, you know silence you know how much is silence worth for you for me i love silent things and if it can be passively cool you know i'm happy for it to sit that 17 watts as long as it's over that two gigahertz i don't know why the two gigahertz is sort of like a psychological barrier but it, you know i want it to be over two gigahertz it's definitely not thermal throttling as you can see there 2 gigahertz 2.1 it is not thermally throttling at all so 
yeah happy days it's going to stay at this 17 watts forever we'll just quickly have a look at the score at the end all right so 1300 yeah that's that's pretty much you know not much slower than the i7 so yeah there you go stay tuned for more catch you next one tally ho